numeracy. Wow, I use lots of numeracy in my job. Being a science teacher, we're constantly doing experiments where we have to measure quantities of different things like length, mass, volume, temperature. Um, using in science, then we use the, we make a lot of graphs, look at a lot of data handling. Um, and then we have to interpret the graphs and look at things like reliability, bias, and validity. Um, then in my job, we're constantly looking at the results of pupils, um, you know, working out the percentage of pupils that achieve maybe an A star to a C, uh, how we need to, what we need to do to improve, how does our how do our results compare to that of other schools. Um, so yeah, we use a lot of numeracy in my job, and it's very important. Numeracy in technology is quite simple. We do measuring and we do estimate the materials, how much materials we're going to use. We use the tools such as a vernier and a steel ruler and we do things like check the drill is the correct size for the hole you want to do or estimating to make sure you've got enough material to make the component that you want to. I use numeracy a lot in my job but specifically I use it in the school show. I have to consider the profit that we'll make and by doing that I need to look at the ticket sales and I have to calculate how many members of the audience we can fit in the hall and then price the tickets to make sure that we cover the cost of the show. I also have to think about fundraising and think about different ways that we can make money. Um, we also have to deal with invoices and pay deposits and then we have to work out how much we owe companies for their service. Uh, as part of my role as head of department, uh, I need to use quite a lot of percentages uh, so my big task is to analyse results and to compare over years. Um, I also use percentages when marking exam papers. Um, never thought I would use this much maths, but I use it almost every day now. So I suppose in the classroom we use maths quite a lot if we're looking at things like non-fiction texts perhaps and mm -hmm. bar charts and that sort of thing. and. Sort yeah. of like, yeah, pie charts and percentages, and um, I think I think also well, not just non-fiction, but when we're looking at poetry and we're looking at rhythm, yes, and um, counting syllables and working out the rhyme, uh, the, the 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 rhyme pattern of the poem. Yeah, yeah, we do that as well, don't we? We do, yeah, we do that. Um, and then within our jobs, as a teacher, we often use maths. Um, when we're looking at, at people's data and we're trying to figure out how well they're doing, um, mm. particularly if they do pass papers and that sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Tra we're converting marks to percentages, aren't we? Yeah. Which helps us to determine what grade a pupil has got. Yeah. Um, and in order to see progress as well, uh, you know, looking at marks across the year to see pu pupil improvement yeah. and progress. So we use maths quite a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, really. Mm. Much more than I would have expected when I first came into teaching as an English teacher. I didn't expect to use maths all the mm. time in the way that I do mm. now. I still have to use a calculator to work out percentages, <laughs> mind. So do I. Well, yeah. I've got to say that in school, <laughs> my favourite subject was maths. And it's odd that I turned out to be an English teacher. But that's the way it was. I couldn't do maths, English and French A-levels. So that maths had to go. Sad. I really, really enjoyed it. It's tidying up, it's ordered, it's logical, you know where you are with it. And how do I use it in my job? Well, teaching poetry is often like maths, because it is so dependent on counting and recognising patterns and seeing cross connections, it's amazing. I love maths, I read maths books in my spare time, in fact, if you look at the door of my classroom, you will see the titles of some of the maths books I've read. And I'm doing a maths degree in my spare time. Were you good at maths in school? I wasn't too bad. Once, yeah, I, I wasn't too bad. I had a B at O level, but I think that was my limit. Yeah, I wasn't I so good, so. actually. I, I struggled in school. I didn't enjoy mm. maths that much, but I think probably in this school these mm. days maths is taught really yes. well and yeah. it's much more engaging and there's loads going on but when I was in school it was a bit dry and yeah. I used to struggle to concentrate quite a bit so yeah. I wish I'd done a bit better in school I think I got my I got my C grade in the end um, 
which probably now I think I probably could have done better, but I just didn't enjoy it very much and I really had to force myself to do it. Mm. So quadratic equations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make me feel quite ill. Yeah, just like slightly queasy. Yeah, but yeah, I, I love trigonometry. I absolutely love. Yeah, things where there was a formula yeah. and that formula worked every time you applied it. Uh, I I quite enjoyed that. I quite like the sort of the structure and the order of maths. Mm. Actually, it was a nice balance to English where there is you know everything is much more open, isn't it, and and not determined in the same way as it can be in maths. Mm, yeah, I think you. Yeah, I think you're right. I think probably these days I'd quite enjoy it mm. if I had to go, really. But I'm doing it enough anyway in my job. So. <laughs> um, obviously, numeracy within P is pretty much vitally important across the all curriculum areas. So whether it's cases three, four, and five, we use uh, use it quite a lot. Use it very much on a basic level at key stage three for simple things like measuring, timekeeping, usually in athletics. And also doing adventure activities for good referencing. Um, so that's at its most basic level. Key stage four, uh, particularly at GCSC, there's a lot of interpretation of data in terms of graphs. Uh, we are looking at very often heart rates, work rates, uh, percentage of maximums, whether it's through weight training uh, or through resting heart rate, maximum heart rates. So it's very much used uh, in that sort of vein. At A level, it goes actually up a level. Um, again, you look at a lot of sort of percentage of maximums, whether it's heart rate or should we say strength, um, but also you're looking at, um, for example, the ejection fraction uh, from the heart um, and a lot of things to do with uh, developing physical performance. At A2, where it gets a little bit more complex uh, for an area called biomechanics, which is looking at sort of very finer movements of sort of joint angles and levers. Um, you've actually then got um, quite complicated sort of maths and equations they sort of look at regarding um, vectors, regarding projectile motion, center of gravity location, force production, um, and then possibly a slightly more basic level uh, outside of biomechanics, you've got sort of calorie intake, energy expenditure, um, and, and some energy equations as well. So it's quite widely used really within, um, within PE. Uh, particularly as you go through key stage four and particularly in key stage five. Uh, I also use it quite a bit um, within sort of the, uh, another job I do with, with Bedwas RFC. Uh, the way rugby has actually gone now, there's a great deal of emphasis placed on um, performance analysis. So you're looking very much at a lot of statistical data. Statistical data um, could come in the form of various things like tackle counts, gain line efficiency, um, set piece efficiency. Um, and, and so it's, it's, it's very much a big part of the game, very much a big part of the game. Um, and that gets fed back to players. They see their own statistics, they set targets from it. And ultimately, uh, they try to improve their performance and, and, and get some consistency to it week on week. So it is, it is very much used at that level. And then when it comes to the performance analysis, then they're, they're quite, uh, the players as well as the coaches are very comfortable in understanding the, really um, their, their maximums in terms of, sort of lifting ability, in terms of speed, power, acceleration. And, and they're very comfortable both using the equipment, the sort of, um, uh, that measures that and they're also able to interpret the data. So, you know, it's widely used in the field of, uh, of, of physical education and at a higher level with sport, where players and coaches use such information interchangeably. So numeracy, very important in every aspect of my life, from getting up in the morning to make sure I've set my alarm so I'm able to tell the time, to check in my bank account and doing my shopping, being able to measure things so that I can paint and wallpaper. So yes, can't underestimate the importance of basic numeracy skills. As a head of year, numeracy is uh, very important. We use it a lot, um, particularly to do with attendance. We have weekly form group attendance that we calculate and uh, publicise to the form groups in assemblies and form periods. Also individual attendance, we look at um, the impact of uh, missing a certain amount of days uh, and what impact that can have on people's education. Um, we also um, use, when we come to look at performance in lessons, so we look at um, average effort grades and how they can how they change across um, the year group. 
and then reward those who've made a significant improvement and um, obviously put uh, interventions in place for those who need a bit of extra support. So as I say, numeracy is very important for us as ID and we use it significantly. Okay, the ways that I use maths as head teacher here at St Kenneth are things to do primarily with budgeting. Managing a budget, calculating how much money we have, making sure that we can balance the books, using it in spreadsheets to be able to make sure that we're not spending more than we have and making sure that the money is being spent in the right ways. That can involve quite serious and complicated calculations and I never thought when I was studying maths when I was at school that I would be using maths in this way. It also means that I use it in the way that I use ICT to plan for school improvement and to plan for school developments. So not only just in data spreadsheets when we're using it for targeting pupils and for making sure that we know exactly what each pupil is going to be able to achieve, but how we actually calculate that achievement as well. And also another way that we use maths within the senior team within school is for timetabling purposes, working out exactly how many lessons each child should have, how we should be able to calculate that formula across the two week timetable. But I've also used maths when I was teaching as well as a history teacher in terms of graphs, in terms of spreadsheets, in terms of working out the population increase during the Industrial Revolution, for example. So maths plays in a very important part in every aspect of my role as head teacher and in my role as a classroom teacher as well. So some of the ways in which I, I use data in my role as deputy head teacher at St Kenneth Community School would be, for example, plotting student progress, uh, looking at groups of pupils, looking at classes and looking at subjects and using um, Excel spreadsheets, scatter graphs um, to plot progress and to look at how students are performing across the board. And that happens throughout the year. So half-termly uh, tracking reports are analysed. And we look at that at a subject level, at a pupil level. When we identify mentor groups, and we look at how mentor groups are doing, um, exactly the same sorts of skills are used there. So there's a lot of handling data. Um, the other challenge in terms of use of data is making that data really user-friendly. So being able to present it in a way that parents, pupils and staff can manipulate the data and use it to, to raise standards across the school. Um, so again, that involves use of spreadsheets, involves calculations, it involves lots of graphing activity and in particular trying to look at what which graphs present data most clearly. Um, and certainly in terms of the skills that I developed at school, both in maths and in geography, they're both really, really useful in terms of my day-to-day -day role. I use maths every minute of the day uh, in my work. I have to provide information to teachers, data about children's attainment and effort. I use graphs, I use Excel, I use percentages. I use any amount of maths really all day long. It's really important for the children's education to make sure that we know how they're progressing. Hi, my name's Vicky. I work in the main office. I use maths to do uh, banking, um, which is adding, subtracting. I then add the maths onto a computer screen for collections and deposits. I use it for um, my day-to-day -day work. I was never very good at maths in school and uh, I'm very sorry that I didn't work harder at it and get a better grade because it would have helped me a lot more. It's very important and um, I think everybody should try hard. Hello, my name is Kay Richards. I'm Miss Collins's PA. Um, I use maths every day um, as part of my job. Um, I pay all the school invoicing. Um, obviously, you've got to add all the figures up, all the VAT, um, all the gross and the net. Um, I also use banking to do um, money for trips. So all the money that comes in our pupils for school trips has got to be added, subtracted and reconciled. Um, as part of that, the Excel spreadsheet I use a lot of the time. Um, I think it's very important that all pupils know to use Excel. Um, I wasn't brilliant at maths in school, but um, I think it's very important that you try hard to get the best grade you possibly can, because maths is used every day in every walk of life, wherever you work. So it's very important that you try your best and get maths grades. Hi, I'm Steve Barrow. I'm the business manager here at the school. I'm responsible for the buildings, for health and safety, HR and the finances of the school. So maths is at the heart of a lot of my work. For example, with the budgets we have for the school, we get about £5 million a year 
and I need to work out how much I need for things like the wages, the gas, the water, the electrics, and um, building maintenance for things like the new toilets we put in the school and the uh, new science lab recently, um, things that are like mowing the grass on the grounds maintenance, minibus, how much uh, the petrol is going to cost for that and the maintenance of it, resources, things for the pens and the PCs and uh, everything else that we have in the school, um, supply teacher cost and the cost of everybody's exams. Um, I have to constantly monitor that right the way throughout the year and use things like Excel. Um, so I need to know how to write formulas in Excel, which is all comes through from maths knowledge. Um, and I also use it in building projects. So we need to know how to calculate things like areas. So we need to know how much carpet we need and how much paint we need for the walls um, and things like the perimeters. So we can work out how much fencing we need and things like the skirting boards and things like that. So it's very, very important in my job and I use it constantly. Okay, as a head of year, uh, we use uh, numbers. Talk again. Right, numeracy and technology. The main put is cut. Whenever you're ready. Oh, <laughs> stop it. Do it again. Okay, let me just read this in. I, am I recording? Yeah. The cameras were here, those right, So you can edit this bit out then yeah, while I'm going. Yeah, am I recording? Yeah, I'll get this bit out then. <clears throat> well, let me start by saying, spent. Trying to talk, you? Yeah? I'm yeah. on camera, man. This is like Lenny Henry on that Premier in advert. I can't talk now. I'm shooting a commercial.